There's an interesting exchange this morning between Grant Shapps and Sir Keir Starman. I mean, they didn't actually meet. This was an exchange through the media. And Grant Shapps talks about the probability of a Labour supermajority. And Sir Keir Starmer responds by saying, well, we can't take anything for granted. We simply need to get a mandate in order to change the country. What is this all about? This is all about Grant Shapps trying to provoke the idea that people won't come out to vote for Labour, or people will come out to vote for the Conservatives, and that supermajority will not happen. I think a supermajority is not likely anyway. I don't think there will be a supermajority because I don't think Labour is offering anything, even if it promises to fill in potholes, that makes it that different from the Conservative Party, except perhaps the VAT on private education. It is interesting. People say, well, uh, VAT is on all businesses, so it should be on education as well. But it isn't on education. It's it's not on ordinary schools. And where ordinary schools pay VAT for books and bits and pieces, they get it back from the local authority. So there isn't a principle that there is VAT on schools. There is a principle that there's VAT on a number of businesses. And if VAT is going to be slapped on independent schools, maybe it should be slapped on all schools. But that's that's for another debate. And equally, uh, you've got to ask, what happens to, let's say, English as a foreign language and language schools? Will VAT be slapped on them as well? And will that break an extremely fine model for businesses, particularly during the summer holidays, when tons of foreign students come to the UK to study English. We export it. And of course, that the strength of that English as a foreign language business is one reason why perhaps people who are in need, migrants, asylum seekers, turn to Britain rather than to France or Germany to places with languages that they don't know. Because across Europe and beyond, people have learnt English because of the huge effort made by the EFL industry. So is that going to be destroyed as well? Is that going to be threatened as well? Because the EFL industry makes quite a lot of money. But a lot of the time, the smaller EFL and the smaller language colleges survive on a day-to-day basis. And a lot of the smaller independent schools, a lot of the smaller private schools, barely survive. I know. I I was involved in questions about whether or not to take over one, so I looked at their accounts. Barely surviving. This isn't a market for making a lot of money. It's a market for influence, and it's a market for... um, feeling that you're doing something of use, but it's certainly not a market for making a lot of money unless you're going to take over an incredibly efficient and well-run and prestigious independent school. And those aren't the ones that are up for sale. Uh, And independent schools, of course, private schools always come with a lot of baggage. Staff that um, have become old retainers, as well as students who have nowhere else to go. So you take on the package. It's like taking on a rented apartment, buying a rented apartment or buying a rented house. Uh, They come with tenants. And anyway, the Grant Chaps Keir Starmer discussion is, is, I think, a way of poking poking the Labour animal and seeing whether or not it's going to roll over and play dead. Because if it does, that's the end. And at the moment, the only thing that is driving forward that majority or supermajority is dissatisfaction with the Conservatives. The Conservatives, if they're they're going to survive at all um, beyond this general election, they need to move back into the centre ground. 
A party that moves into the extremes is a party doomed to failure. As the Labour Party demonstrated when it embraced uh, Michael Foote and Jeremy Corbyn. It can turn it around very quickly, clearly, uh, with modern media. Keir Starmer has done a wonder. But Keir Starmer is not rocking the boat. Keir Starmer is not actually offering anything. He's offering an alternative to what people have come to dislike. People have come to dislike the nastiness in the Conservative Party. That is the lurch towards the right wing. And because the right wing makes so much noise, Conservative Party members, I use the term pointedly, Conservative Party members think that that's the noise of the country. It's not. The noise of the country is the middle ground, both for the Conservatives and for the Labour Party. And the Labour Party seems to be occupying that more assuredly than the Conservative Party, which has abandoned it in favour of nastiness about small boats and so on. Notice Rishi Sunak um, is saying pretty well the same as Keir Starmer when it comes to small boats, when it comes to letting migrants work. Because Sunak doesn't want to wobble his small boat. Maybe something later will come along the line, but at the moment, the rhetoric which is coming out of the Labour Party is modest and is uh, designed not to upset, which makes it very difficult for Rishi Sunak to attack. Rishi Sunak shouldn't be attacking the Labour Party. There's no point. He should be attacking the far right. But he worries, as I do, that the far right will take over the Conservative Party. And the question really is when. If Rishi Sunak wanted to rescue the Conservative Party, he would move to the centre. And I have a sort of soft spot for Rishi, but I feel he's been a fool and a twit. And it's not just the D-Day experience. But, you know, twits must be allowed to get on with their experience because uh, they have to learn for themselves. And Rishi Sunak is surrounded by an inner cabinet of twits. It's like a Twitterati feast. It's like a nest, a nest of twits.